check out Math Count. Math Count is a great learning um, website, especially for math. And I think that you should really check out their website, especially for the problem of the week, because it's just like a weekly exercise to keep training your brain. Anyway, let's get to this. Um, the Agnesy High School Auditorium has exactly 26 rows of seats. The rows are labeled in order from the front of the auditorium to the back from A through Z. So what I'm imagining right here is, is this is the auditorium, and there's more and more seats. So, what we know is that there are eight seats in row A. Each row after the, four, after the first row has two more seats than the previous row. There are 10 seats in row B, 12 seats in row C, and so on. How many seats are there in row B? Are there in row Z? So, of course, row A is first, the very first row. Row Z is the 26th row. There are 26 letters in the English alphabet. So we know that for row, for row A, really, if it's the first row, it's just kind of, um, I'm going to label it as one. This is, um, you know, math, so it's going to be easier if I do it with 1 to 26. So for row A, there are eight seats. Now I'm going to do row B. In row B, there are 10 seats. In row C, there are 12 seats. So we're trying to find how much there are in row Z, or 26. And how much is there going to be? We don't know. But what we can figure out is, say, 4, 2, 6. So, so we know that if this was 4, this was um, 5, and this was 6, what would be the next number over here? Well, that would just be 12 plus 2, which would be 14. Then 16. Then 18. Now, I'm trying to ask you, can you find a pattern here? Well, let's see. We know that for every increase of, I'm going to name this x, okay? It's just a name, a variable. And down here, y. For every increase of x, so by 1, there is an increase of 2 on y. So this is addition. Okay. So y started, so if this, okay, if x was 0, now we're turning this into a pure mathematics problem, all right? So if x equals 0, if x equals 0, um, let's think about what it would be. Well then it would just be 6. I know that there really isn't a row 0, all right? I know there isn't a row 0. But this is just for figuring out the problem, the question right here. So, so how I got this was over here would be 8, right? This was 1. The, pr the pattern is plus 2. So reversed, it would be minus 2. So for 0, that would be a 6. So what does that mean? It means that if we take away 6 from each of these, so this would become 2, this would become 4, this would become 6, and so on, it becomes a much more easier problem to write down an equation, to write down the pattern. So we're trying to find the 
pattern. Right. So if it was two, four, and six, you see, it would become one and two, two and four, three and six, and it's a direct multiply by two. So how we can write that would be six plus two x equals y. So we're trying to find the y of 26. And we know that in this case, what's the value of x? Yep, 26 right here. And we would do 6 plus 2 times 26, which after um, calculating, you know, this becomes 52. 6 plus 52 is 58. So how many seats are there in row Z? That would be 58 seats. And that's the answer to the problem. Notice how for this, I was writing down a table first. And then I was like, how can I make this a easy pattern to express? And then I thought about what if I went back? What if I went to zero over six? That's, that's what I thought of. And, you know, in real life, there wouldn't be a row zero. That does not exist. But that was just to merely help us write down the equation. So after transferring it, the information into this table right here, it's a pure mathematics problem. It's just how to express the pattern in here. So I could go back. I could do zero. I could do negative one. And now, again, it's a pure mathematics problem. And that's just for helping me solve the problem. So that's where the six is from. Okay, second problem. What is the total number of seats in the UC high school auditorium? So this isn't asking for the, the for example, how many seats are in the anymore. It's asking for the total number, which means we're going to be using addition. But there's so many rows. How do, how do we... Like stack them, you know, use traditional algorithm, add them, or is there a smarter way? So first, I'm going to write the equation down. Of course, show with row A's. That's ten plus twelve plus. Sorry, um, missed a, uh, eight plus ten plus twelve plus, and so on until we have. Um, 56, that's number Y, and 58. Now we're trying to find what this equals. That is truly a long line. But do you think that there is a way for us to even, t for us to turn it into a smaller problem because I think there's something repeating here. Well, what if we took the smallest and the largest? Remember, this is a skill that, you know, when you're doing long addition problems, just like this one, you know to um, bring the smallest to the largest. Not just an addition, action. a lot of puzzles, problems, um, with including sums. Um, and you, for example, trying to find the equal you will be able to need the skill to be able to pair up the largest with the smallest in order to make their sums equal. So what does this equal? This is just, you know, 8 plus 58. This is the associative property. Associative property of addition. So it says we, we, it doesn't matter the order. We do things in the sum is still the same. So 8 plus 58 equals, equals 66. Now let's do this, the second smallest to the second oldest value. 10 plus 56. And I'm starting to form kind of like a rainbow arc kind of pattern right here. 10 plus 56 is 66. All right, six, lots of 66. So 12, I'm going to add um, the 54 over here. That's the term um, right in front of 56. So 12 
plus 54 is equal to 66. Another 66. So if it's repeated addition, it's really multiplication. So 66 times something. But in here, how many groups of 66s are there? Well, we're trying to find how many pairs there are. How many of these pairs can we make up? Well, we know that there's a total of, of um, 58. But that this, the how many 66s are there? We're not going to look at this. We're going to look at which term this is. For example, this is the first term, second term, third term, fourth term. All of this, which means that over here, it's the 26th term, right? Z is a 26th letter. So are we going to do 66 times 26? Not quite. With each pair, there are two, and there is a total of 26 terms. So we would do 26 divided by 2, which equals 13. Then we're going to multiply the 13 with 66. All right, and all we have to do is solve. So that would be equal to 660 plus 198. Then we would be doing addition, so 8 in the 1's place, 5 and 8. So 8, 5, 8. The total number of seats would be 858 seats in the school auditorium.